brothers and sisters welcome to this new episode of sunday with the word of god let us be in the presence of god and we begin invoking his name in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen a reading from the book of sarah Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sins in detail. Forgive your neighbor's injustice. Then when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days, set enmity aside. Remember death and decay, and cease from sin. Think of the commandments, hate not your neighbor. Remember the Most High's covenant and overlook faults. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm Let our response be. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. The Lord is kind and merciful, is slow to anger and rich in compassion. He pardons all your iniquities, heals all your ills, He redeems your life from destruction crowns you with kindness and compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. He will not always tire, nor does He keep His wrath forever. Not according to our sin does He deal with us, nor does He requite us according to our crimes. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. For us the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is His kindness toward who fear Him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has He put our transgression from us. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and reaching compassion. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, none of us lives for oneself, and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that He might be Lord of both the dead and the living. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Chapter 18, verses 21 to 35. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, 
How often must I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus answered him, I said to you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. This is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold along with his wife, his children and all his property in payment of the debt. And that the servant fell down and did him homage and said, Be patient with me and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now, when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant! I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly father do to you unless each of you forgive your brother from your heart. The good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, two questions arise in my mind as I listen to the gospel passage of this Sunday. Why should I forgive to the one who has wronged to me? And why forgiveness needs to be shared with others. In the year 1996, a Truth and Reconciliation Commission was set up in South Africa after the apartheid regime. This tribunal was constituted to bear witness to, to record and to grant amnesty to the accused and offering reparation and rehabilitation for the victims. All the proceedings were done in the public and I have watched some of those sessions documented by BBC. In one such TRC session, having heard both sides, the accused and the victim side, the accused, a white police officer, asked the child of the victim belonging to the black community can you forgive me and there was a pin drop silence after a while from the back of the hall a woman was shouting at do not forgive him he killed your dad he has orphaned us and to the police officer can you get my husband back to life The white police officer came out of the accused chamber, knelt before the boy, crying and weeping and asked again, Can you forgive me for the mistakes that I have done? His mother was trying to dissuade him to do so. After a while, the boy embraced the police officer. 
When we fail to forgive, we get trapped in our resentment. We get imprisoned in our bitterness. And on the other hand, when we forgive, you are free to love. It liberates your soul. It removes all fears. For forgiveness and love are always interconnected. He who forgives you out of love takes upon himself of the consequences of what you have done. Thus forgiveness always entails a sacrifice. The price for your own liberation comes through the sacrifice of another. Therefore, you must in turn be willing to liberate in the same way and continue the flow of love. Oh, do you want to experience this liberation today? Then ask the help of the Holy Spirit and say, Who do I need to forgive today? And this formula may be helpful. In the name of Jesus, I forgive, said the name of the person, for, said the reasons and the wrongs done. And remember, with God's help, forgiveness is possible. Amen. mind
God our Father, we come to you in our need to ask your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. Protect the medical experts that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health soon. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in this trying time to work for the good of all and to help those in need. We implore you to stop the spread of this virus and to save us from our fears. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. Saint Rock, pray for us. Saint Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. Saint Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. Today, I am honored to speak about a great woman, Dr. Concepcion Aguila. To say she was accomplished would be an understatement. She was a trailblazer who attained feats that exceeded expectations for women in those times and even today. She earned both her Master of Arts and Master of Law degree from CEU, was admitted into law practice by the United States Supreme Court, and became the first woman to receive a PhD from the prestigious Georgetown University in the United States. <clears throat> Dr. Aguila was a true escolarian. She studied, taught, worked in the university for the greater part of her life. In her time at CEU, she wore many hats, serving as a classroom teacher, principal, Dean of the Graduate School and Executive Director of the University. In every endeavor she pursued, Tita Conchita reflected the values of our University. To most, she was Dr. Concepcion Aguila. To me, she was my Tita Conchita. Although her achievements are undoubtedly great, her impact goes far beyond her credentials and accomplishments. Tita Conchita was a motivator, a groundbreaker, and a world changer. 
Nobody else has affected my life like her. She was constantly thinking about how her actions impacted others and would always find ways to empower those around her. As a young girl, she instilled a strong sense of self-respect, self-confidence, and empowerment in me. Whenever I encountered obstacles that seemed impossible and expressed my frustrations, Tita Kunchita would always remind me, never say you cannot do something. Change your station. She truly believed that mindset and attitude meant everything. That if you wanted to succeed, you first had to believe in yourself. She always encouraged us to approach life with an I can do it mindset. Half the battle is won by simply doing so. I can do it became my life motto. I applied Tita Conchita's advice in my teaching career, eventually passing on her words to my beloved children and grandchildren. Now, I pass on her wisdom to all of you. In these difficult times we now face, it is hard to find solace. The future of our country and our world is unsure. However, Dr. Concepcion Aguila and her contemporaries went through bigger struggles in World War II. Japanese forces wanted to occupy CEU as a base. But Tita Kunchita stood her ground and refused. Fellow Escolarians, in times of trials and adversity, know that you are still empowered. You can still rise. Believe it, and you can do it. Tita Conchita, I did my best in this life. I hope I made you proud. Thank you. The Lord be with you and with your spirit and may Almighty God bless you, your families, your dear and near ones in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, oh, oh.